Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Say, do you know what a ham is? No, I'm not talking about something that goes with eggs. I'm referring to an amateur radio operator. Henry, for example, is a ham. He likes to use both the single key and the mic. Gets a lot of pleasure out of it, too. Well, right now, Henry is working his ham station. It's located in the spare room next to Henry's bedroom. Oh, yes, the name of this story is Dead on Arrival. Where's that station you're listening to now, Henry? Well, that's Des Moines, Bill. We oh. talk back and forth a lot. Uh-huh. Hey, what's the matter? The other fella get tired? <laughs> yeah. He's finished transmitting for the night. Says he's got homework to do before he goes to bed. Uh-huh. I think I'll sign off, too, because I've got some of the same torture to go through. <laughs> yeah, don't be long-winded now. It's going on to 9 o'clock. <laughs> don't worry, I won't. This is going to be short. Oh, sure. That's what they all say. See? I told you that's all there was to it. <laughs> Remarkable. Never saw such a short-winded young fellow in all my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now for some trig and then into the hay pile. Had a rough day today. What are you going to do, Bill? Oh, I'm going to read some correspondence, do my Sunday school lesson, and turn in. Okay. I'll see you in the morning. Mm-hmm. Sure thing. Good night, Henry. Night. When we went to bed that night in our cozy home at Naughty Pine, we didn't know what was about to happen in a rough little shack in Cougar Canyon. It's where two trappers live, a father and a son about 35 miles from Naughty Pine. Giuseppe, how do you feel now, eh, son? You, you take this cup of tea. It make you feel warm inside. Pop, Pop, I cannot drink of that. I do see. Let, let me feel your, your head. Oh, you got a fever. You should never go out in the storm like you did. You should do what your papa tells you. Don't you know? I know. Oh, oh papa. Papa, I feel worse. I'm a... Gonna... Hey, now, now, you stay there, Giuseppe. I'm going to see if I can get a doctor. Don't leave me, papa. I don't want to die. I'm not to leave you, son. You think I let you stay by yourself? No, I'm a call on the radio. That's what I got it for. No, now I call somebody. Must be somebody listening somewhere. Pop, Papa, something. She's so hot. So what's the matter? Pop, I feel awful. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a got to get up. Stay in bed, Giuseppe. I'm a come. <laughs> Lie down, Giuseppe. No, no, I got Lie down, Giuseppe. Lie <laughs> down. <laughs> oh. oh, Giuseppe. My son. Henry, wake up. Come on, pal. Wake up. <laughs> hey, Chief Snorting Bull, wake up, will you? Come on, sack hound. Get out of the blankets. Oh, boy. Oh, leave me alone, will you? 
Yes, sir. Somebody else, will you? Listen, fella. I'm counting to three, and you'd better be out of the hay by then, or you know what happens. All right, one, two... Oh, okay. Okay, I, I'm up. What? What wicked thing makes you wake me up at this hour, Bill? Your noise box, Henry. Did you turn your radio off? Huh? Oh, say, you're right. I must have left the receiver on and turned off only the transmitter. Or I'll go shut it off. Well, say, why couldn't you turn it off? You know where the switch is. Because I wanted you to listen to that signal. If I'm not mistaken, it's a call for help. Jumping horn toad, Bill. That's a call for help. Not so loud. You wake up mom. Now, see if you can read that signal. Weak as it is. Okay. It's too weak to get much sense out of it. I get the words, needs doctor, Mm -hmm. and the word sick. Beyond that, I I get only blurbs. Who's ever sent on that call is pretty rusty on the key. And then we agree. I've been listening to that for half an hour before I got you up. Uh, See if you can contact that transmitter. I'll try. Hey, take it slower, pal. That party can't send very well. They probably can't read very well either. You're right, Bill. I'll try it slower. Okay. Good boy. Now let's see if he answers. I guess he didn't read me. I'll try again, though. Yeah. Let's keep on trying. We've got to get through. I'm afraid it's no use, Bill. I've tried now for half an hour and he still doesn't read me. This is a powerful transmitter. He still doesn't answer my call. Perhaps he doesn't have a receiver. Or if he does, he isn't pausing. Hey, listen. Now what do we do? It sounds like it's far away. Yeah. We've got to find out how far away. You can't ignore any distress call, pal. Yeah, that's right. But how are we going to find out where it's coming from? Why, it's too weak to hardly get the direction. I'll call the ranger station at Forest Creek and see if they pick this up. Okay. I'll stay here and listen for a clearer message. Creek Ranger Station. Tom speaking. Uh, Tom, this is Bill. Well, voices in the night. What's on your mind, old boy? Noises in the night, Tom. (laughs) What do you mean, ghosts? (laughs) No, Tom. I wanted to see if you can pick up a weak signal for help on your receiver, uh, frequency 7150. (sighs) No joking? Uh, One being sent? Yeah. We pick it up on Henry's set. (laughs) Must be one, then. That boy's got a powerful station. Hold the phone a while. I'll take a listen. Okay, I'll wait. Does he hear it, Bill? I don't know yet, Henry. He's trying to pick it up. He doesn't have a very selective receiver. I don't know, though. Being up in the mountains may let him pull it in, though. Yeah, yeah, that's possible. Hello, Bill? Uh, yes, Tom. Uh, can you find it? No, there you sound. Must be coming from China. I can't pick up the thing. Okay, Tom. Thanks, anyway. Sorry to wake you up. Oh, don't mention it. I can use a little excitement. It's mighty lonesome up here. Let me know what you find. I sure will. So long. No soap, Bill? No, pal. No soap. I'm going to try the state police headquarters at Folsom City. They got a better receiver. Well, if they don't pick it up, then what do you say we go to bed and forget about it, huh? I've got a trig exam tomorrow. <laughs> Try 
to pick up that distress signal, but we can't seem to locate it. Well, keep trying for a bit, will you, Sergeant? No, we sure will, Ranger, but if we can't find it, then it must be pretty well localized. We've got a powerful outfit here. I know. The only other thing I can think of is the signal might be coming in freakishly on a short skip. Well, could be. Well, hold on a minute. Hey, Pete, uh, can we find it? Can you pick it up, Bill? I doubt it, Henry. We'll know in a minute. Uh, hello, Bill? Uh, yes? I'm sorry, uh, but we can't seem to find it anywhere. We'll call you if we catch it. Thanks, Sarge. Goodbye. No, they don't read it at all, Henry. Uh, this is strange, all right. Very strange. Yeah, but let's go to bed and forget about it, huh? This is probably just a, a freak pickup from a long way off. Nothing we can do about it, I guess. I don't know, pal. I sure wish I could get a fix on the position of that transfer. Ah, perhaps you're right, though. Maybe it is coming from a long distance pick it out because of some atmospheric conditions. Yeah, I think so. I'm going to... Hey, listen. The distress signal stopped. Hmm? You're right, Henry. Well, that settles it. Let's go to bed. If we can pick it up in the morning, maybe we'll try to find out where it's coming from. Can't possibly be anywhere around here if the other boys can't pick it up. Well, night, Bill. Hey, good night, pal. sleep either, huh? No. Not when I think somebody needs help. Yeah, me too. You able to pick up the signal again? Nope. And I've got the receiver wide open. Mm-hmm. Hey. Hey, there it is again. Let's try to send another message. Oh, you mean there it was, Bill. <sighs> it stopped again. Ah, the atmosphere must be playing tricks again. Hey, maybe that's Mike or the Police radio station. I'll get it. Hey, maybe they found Hello, it. Hello, Ranger Bill speaking. Yes? Oh, that's very good, Sergeant. Uh, just a minute. Henry, uh, pencil and paper, please. Yeah, right here. Thanks. Okay, Sergeant, go ahead and give me the position. Yes? Mountain Goat's Bluff. Yes, yes, I've got it. Thanks for calling. Yes, I'll let you know what we find. Mountain Goat's Bluff? Why, what's out there? Nothing. There's a trapper's cabin at Cougar Canyon, about ten miles north of there, and it could be that's where the signal's coming from. Well, how are we going to know? We can't. We can only guess. Trying to calculate the position of the transmitter from the varying strength of the signals. The only thing is, it's awfully rugged country to be running around on a guess. Hey, maybe that's Tom. He's probably picked up the signal now. We'll soon find out. Hello, Bill speaking. Oh, yes, Tom. Yeah, you did? Oh, that's good. Uh, uh, just a minute. Henry, go downstairs and call Grey Wolf and Stumpy on the other phone, will you? Tell them to meet us at headquarters in half an hour. Boy, Stumpy sure isn't going to like to be getting out of bed in the middle of the night. Well, don't worry about that. Just get going. I'll figure the position of this signal will be right down as soon as I finish talking with Tom. Okay, Bill. Now, Tom, uh, let me have that data again, will you? I will. This is Henry. I should have known it. Couldn't be anybody else but a ranger that do this to a friend of his. Now, cool off, old boy, and listen. There's a distress signal coming in on my receiver. Bill wants you to meet us at headquarters in half an hour. Huh? Distress, huh? Is that right? Well, why didn't you say so? I'm on my way right now. Well, Mr. Jenkins, if you had... 
What a man. Well, now I've got to call Gray Wolf and then get my cold weather gear on. Where do you think this call for help come from, Bill? Here, hand me that uh, pile of pans there, Henry. Right, here you are. Well, as near as I can tell, it's probably coming from right around the Cougar Canyon area. There's a trapper's cabin there, and if I remember correctly, they have some kind of a makeshift radio there so they can keep in touch with the world. Well, that's a tough place to get to now. I hope to tell you, Sonny, it is. Uh, that ought to do it. Why, there's eight feet of snow up in those parts now. Eight feet of snow? Yes, sirree. If we sink into that, we won't get out till spring. That's no joke, either. What are we going to do, Bill? We'll pick up a dog team at Caleb Moore's place and carry medical gear, food, skis, and snowshoes. Also packs and blankets. You all set, fellas? Yeah. I'll well, set sure. it up. Say, why don't we take the snowmobile? Well, that would be fine if we could get close to Cougar Canyon. But the closest we could bring the snowmobile is ten miles away, and that wouldn't be much help. Maybe somebody's dying. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, let's go get the dog team and load them on the truck. Come on, big boy. Get into this harness. Don't give me any of your lip. Who wants that other husky, Henry? He's trying to start a scrap with his partner. Hey, 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 tough guy. Put your teeth back in your faces. Come on. Save energy for the truck ahead. Okay, fellas. All the gear is off the truck and on the sled. Now, if the going gets too tough for the dogs, we'll have to pack some of the gear ourselves. Maybe in deep snow we'll have to. You all set with the dogs? Yep, all ready. Henry, you drive the team. Ride the sled when you can. Because we're going to push right on through to Cougar Canyon. And I want to save your strength. All right, let's go, boy. You brutes, come on, mush! Come on, Skeeter, get this sled moving! Help! That's the eight foot snow ahead of us. So I'll break the trail for the dogs. I'll break trail with you, Bill. There's a lot of soft snow on top of the crust. Good idea, Stumpy. Let's go, boys. Get in there, Skeeter! Mush! Mush, you hear me? Mush! Hey, Bill! Bill, hold up! Okay, Henry! Hold up here, wild bruisers! I, I think... I think we ought to take some of the load off that sled. Yeah. Even with you two breaking trail, that soft snow's working these pups pretty hard. Uh, See, they sink many inches down, make hard work. All right. Let's take our packs off the sled and see if that won't help. Then push on. Once we get through this valley, we'll make better time. Dogs do better since we take packs off sled. Yeah. We should be out of this about an hour. Bill, look ahead on Ridge. A man stand there and watch us. Huh? Hey, you're right. That is a man there. I'll fire my pistol. Let him know we see him. Hey, he heard that, Bill. Now he's waving his arms hard. All right, let's step on it, fellas. This may be the one who's calling for help. who's been calling for help on the radio? Yes. My name's Tony Cadizzo. I, my son is very sick, but I'm afraid help she's come too late. What do you mean, Mr. Cadizzo? I think my son, he, he's dead. Oh, not bad. Oh, I see. Well, let's find out for sure. He may only be unconscious. I see, I hope you are right, Mr. Uh, uh, Jefferson. Uh, oh, Bill Jefferson. Uh, uh, my friends here, uh, Henry Scott, Hello. Uh, Stumpy Jenkins, Grey Wolf. Howdy! 
Uh, just call us by our first name. Hello, you you call me Tony. Uh, we go now. Uh, yeah, yeah, right now. Um, how far is it to your camping, Tony? One mile. Henry, uh, you find a place to stake the dogs. We'll go on ahead. <laughs> See if you can get a pulse, will you, Grey Wolf? I try, Bill. What do you think, Bill? Huh? My son, he's uh, dead, no? Well, I'm not a doctor, Tony, but uh, let me finish my examination. I might be able to tell you. I'm not able to get pulse at all, Bill. Mm-hmm. I can't either, Grey Wolf. Well, now, uh, let's listen for a heartbeat. I don't hear anything. My ear against his chest. She's a look uh, bad. Tony, I'm sorry to have to say it, but I I don't catch any signs of life. That's what I'm afraid of all the time. My son, he's dead. Here I cover young fellow with blanket for now. Tony, when did your son take sick? Oh, Two days ago, he, he was on the bed, and all of a sudden, he's a fall on the floor. I put him back in bunk and try to get help on radio. Well, didn't you hear us trying to call you from our station in, in answer to your distress signal? No, no, the receiver, she's broke. It needs to be fixed a long time. I see. Well, Tony, I, I don't like to make you talk about your son, because I know you'd rather not, but... Uh, well, would you answer just a few more questions? Then I won't bother you anymore. What do you like to know? You say your son jumped around just before he became unconscious. Uh-huh. Um, how do you mean, uh, jump around? You know, like a conv- uh, con- convulsion, Tony? That's what I mean, yes. He's a jump around and his eyes roll and he fall on the floor. Then pretty soon uh, he don't move at all. Uh-huh. I see. How old is your boy, Tony? He'll be 23 next month. But he's gone, so what's it matter? Huh? Let's not talk about it anymore. I- huh? I'm sorry, Tony. Just one more question. How long do you think he's been dead? Uh, maybe day, maybe day and a half. What difference it make, huh? Thanks. Uh, Grey Wolf, I'm going outside and talk to Henry and Stumpy for just a minute. Uh, you stay here. Is he dead, Bill? By all outward signs, yes, Henry. What do you mean by that? Either he's dead or he isn't. Well, we don't get any pulse or heartbeat. <laughs> Well, then he's dead. Yeah, that's right, Henry. When your old ticker stops ticking, you're mighty dead. Yes, sirree. Henry, you and Stumpy harness up the team again. We're rushing Tony's son to the hospital. What? Rushing a dead man to the hospital? That's what he said, young feller, but I think his brains got froze on the way up here. Why, we just got here, Bill. Why, the dogs are tired and we're all tired. I don't get it. I'm sorry I can't explain now, Henry. If I did, you'd know I'd gone off the deep end. Let's get the dogs harnessed as quickly as possible. Now, see here, Sonny. Hasn't this gone far enough? I think you're being unreasonable. Who ever heard of rushing a dead man to the hospital? And 35 miles away, too. Henry Scott, you hitch those dogs to the sled immediately and put Tony's son on it. This isn't a request, it's an order. Yes, you hear me right, Tony. We're rushing your son to the hospital. But I can no understand why you do this for my son when when he's a dead. If he was alive, yes, but now, no. Please uh, trust me, Tony. That's all I have to say. You try to make believe maybe my son is dead, no? Tony, I'm not a doctor, and maybe I'm crazy. But please let me take your son to the hospital. All right. Then I go with you. What hospital you take him, huh? Hospital at Naughty Pine. 
Now, Grey Wolf, give me a hand here and we'll put him on the sled. Uh, be sure the blankets are wrapped tightly around him. We've got to keep out every bit of cold. I understand, Bill. Oh, this is very strange. Maybe my son, he's not dead. But if he got no heartbeat, he must be. Huh? Well, Doc, what's the verdict? Tell you in just a minute, Bill. Uh, Tony. Yes, Doc, I'm here on you. You left. Uh, my son... Uh... He's dead? No, Tony. Your son is alive. Very much alive. Huh? Alive? Well, alive. I can't well, that's right. Well, well, Dr. Gross, how can this be? Well, we tried to find his pulse and listen for the heartbeat, and there wasn't a thing. Please, the doctor, this is very serious. Tony, I was never more serious in my life. Your son has a very rare form of epilepsy. And during an acute attack, the victim appears to be quite dead. <laughs> With the proper care and medication, however, he should convalesce rapidly. Oh, you mean... You mean my son is going to be all right? Yes, Tony, in plain English, that's what I mean. He's going to be all right. This hypo should trigger some sign of life shortly. Boy, it's like bringing the dead back to life. Look, look, Giuseppe. He's opening his eyes. Yes, and that means we'd uh, best all leave. Uh, all except you. Tony, you stay with your son and tell him where he is and what happened. Also tell him he's in good hands. There's not a thing to worry about. Thank you, Doctor. Oh, oh Giuseppe. My son. one for the book. Uh, tell me, Bill, uh, how in the world did you know that boy was a victim of epilepsy? Yeah, that's what I like to know, too. Well, the first thing I noticed was that the young fellow's body was still close to normal in body temperature. However, Tony said he'd been dead for two days. I figured rigor mortis would have set in by then, and the body would have been cold. Now, understand, I was guessing at this. I'm certainly not a doctor. Yeah, but that young feller could have been in a coma and died just before we got there. Then the body would still be in almost living temperature. You're perfectly right, Stumpy. I thought of that, and it almost discouraged me from trying what I did, for fear I was making a fool of myself. But when Tony remarked about the convulsions his son had and what kind they were... I just put two and two together. And got four, as usual. Well, of course, there was another angle. I just couldn't let Tony get his hopes up too high. Boy, who'd ever think that such a wild goose chase would have turned out this way? Just goes to show you, I guess. When you have a distress call, don't argue about it. Just do something. Well, see you next week for more adventure with Ranger!